Hey, what's going on? Damien Giacchino here. And before we jump into the message, I first off wanna say thank you for tuning in. I believe that you're gonna be able to encounter God right where you're at. And my prayer is that this message will bless you tremendously, that it will build you up in your faith and help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Lastly, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, I wanna encourage you to do so. That way you can stay up to date on announcements when we go live and other great things happening here at Century. Also, please scan our QR code for all things Century Assembly from events, giving, and just the life of the church. You will find all the information once you scan that QR code. Again, enjoy the message. God bless, and thank you again for tuning in. I want to talk to you this morning as we come to the conclusion of 2024 just around the corner. I want to talk to you about moving from surviving to thriving in 2025. One of the things that I've had the privilege of doing is to stand in many, many churches and to look in the eyes of people like yourself. And uh, even though Jesus has already won the victory, we are, not, we are not trying to get victory. He's already won it. What we have to do is believe him to walk in it. Because it's already done. Oh, the enemy doesn't have the power that he tells you he has. Jesus reigns in heaven on earth and underneath the earth. And he is Lord of all. He reigns. But there are many people that come and they sing praises and they, they be, they're attending churches and they hear the word, but they're in survival mode. They're not thriving. They're not overcoming, they're just barely holding on. They're stuck in the wilderness of fear, frustration, unbelief, difficulties, and uncertainty. They believe the lie of the enemy that the wilderness is greater than God and his faithfulness, goodness, greatness, and power. Instead of thriving, they have a lid on their growth in freedom, in joy, in peace, in blessing. You can be in God's house and not experience freedom. You can be in God's house with people dancing and shouting and not have joy yourself. You can be in God's house. And listen, it doesn't mean many times, even David talked about how he was losing heart until he got in the presence of God, until he began to behold God's goodness and his grace. You can have times where you're going through difficulties, but it doesn't mean that you have to survive. You can thrive through the difficult times. God has not destined us to live in the wilderness. He's destined us to overcome, to thrive, to flourish, the onslaughts in the midst of the enemy and his temptations. Survival is not a goal. It is a lid. A lid keeps things down. A lid keeps things inside. A lid keeps things confined or limited. But thriving pulls the lid off and so that we can live in God's blessings, his destiny, and live an overcoming life. In this world, you will have trouble. And if Jesus would have stopped there, we'd all be discouraged. But he said, be of good cheer. Be joyful. Be rejoicing. Jump up and down and shout and say that I have overcome the world. Because he's overcome, we can overcome. Paul, writing to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, said these words. It is true we live in a body of flesh, but we do not fight like people of the world. We do not use those things to fight that with that the world uses. We use the things God gives to fight with, and they have power. Those things God gives to fight with destroy the strong places of the devil. And we break down every thought and proud thing that puts itself up against the wisdom of God and we take hold every thought and make it obey 
Christ. Paul is writing to the church of Corinth and he's saying to them, listen, our, our weapons aren't physical, our weapons are far greater. They are supernatural and they are weapons given to us so that we are not just surviving, but we are thriving. Let me give you a few of the weapons that God's given you. First of all, his name. Philippians 2.10 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, not only in heaven, but also below the earth. I want you to know something. When you declare the name of Jesus, the enemy must bow his knee. When you stand up and say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes at you, the Bible says he flees in seven directions. One can put a thousand to flight, but two can put 10,000 to flight. Use the name of Jesus. Declare the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, speak his name. Why? It is a weapon against the powers of darkness he also gives us his authority Luke chapter 9 verse 1 uh, one day Jesus calls the 12 together and he gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and heal all sickness and disease I want you to know God has given you authority because of your birth in him his armor, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. He's giving you the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. Every day, put on the armor of God. Every day, wake up and say, thank you, God. I have the mind of Christ today. Why? Because I have the helmet of salvation. I have the breastplate of righteousness. You know why? It's not my goodness. It's his goodness. And he has declared me to be righteous because of his blood. And so I stand in his righteousness. I have truth today. Your word is truth, God. And I pray that today you'll guard my my most vulnerable areas with truth today. Don't let me be deceived. I put on the shoes of peace. I shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains will break out because of the peace of God. I have the shield of faith. Oh man, when the enemy comes at you, you hold up that faith and say in the name of Jesus, you take out the sword of the Spirit and declare what God has done. He's given you the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, Acts chapter 1, I'll ask of the Father. He'll give you another helper. He'll teach you all things and give you power. Say those words with me. He will give you power. You have the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead on the inside of you. No, no, no. You have the same spirit, the one that called Jesus up from the grave, the one that gave authority to the church so that they could do signs and wonders and miracles. You have him in you. You say, well, Pastor Eddie, I don't know. I don't feel like it. Since when do your feelings tell you what you have? You live in faith, you walk in faith, you believe in faith, you stand in faith, you war in faith, and you worship in faith. The just shall live by feelings. No. He's giving you prayer. Don't worry about anything, Philippians 4, 6. But instead, pray about everything man you have power in prayer you'll ask in my name and I will give it to you praise oh man we experience that today Acts 16 Paul and Silas instead of grumbling and whining and complaining they sang praises to God because praise is a weapon but there's another weapon I want to talk to you about today that I have great concern for, and I believe that it is a weapon that we don't use enough. I believe that God has given the church a weapon of warfare that we do not understand the power of it and that it is a gift from heaven, and that is thanksgiving and gratitude. 
Thanksgiving and gratitude is a weapon of warfare against the enemy. Psalm 100 verse 4, enter his gates with and his courts with praise. Give him thank, give thanks to him and praise his name. The research project on gratitude and thanksgiving was done. A study of, of several hundred people. They divided them into three groups. The first group, they said, I want you to keep a diary of the events during the day. The second group were to record all of their unpleasant experiences. And the third group was told to daily write a list of what they were grateful for. The study proved these things, that daily gratitude exercises resulted in higher reports of alertness, enthusiasm, determination, optimism, and energy levels. Additionally, the gratitude group experienced less depression, stress, and more, were more likely to help others. They exercised more regularly. They made more progress towards their personal goals. And they discovered that people who feel grateful are more likely to feel loved. In fact, let me list just a few of the benefits that came through gratitude. Improved physical, emotional, social well-being. Greater optimism and happiness. Improved feelings of connection in times of loss and crisis. Increased self-esteem. Heightened energy levels. It strengthened their heart, their immune system, and decreased blood pressure. It improved emotional and academic intelligence, expanded capacity for forgiveness, detached stress, anxiety, depression, and, and headaches, decreased them, improved self-care and greater likelihood of exercise, and it heightened their spirituality, the ability to see something bigger than ourselves. Gratitude is a vital spiritual and physical weapon in our daily life. It moves you from just surviving to thriving. Is it any wonder that the enemy is constantly fighting against our gratitude, our thankfulness, that he wants us to ignore this word, to ignore this, this, this behavior in our life, this declaration in our life. In fact, the word of God tells us that in the last days, one of the signs would be ingratitude, unthankfulness. In fact, when you look at Romans chapter 1, where it talks about that uh, Paul writing to the church, he says in verse 21 of chapter 1, for although they knew God, it's not on the screen, but it says for all they knew, although they knew God. Think about that. For although they knew God. We're not talking about people that are ignorant to who God is. We're not talking about people who haven't had some kind of experience, encounter, or belief of who God is. It says, although they knew God, they did not honor him as God. And they did or give him thanks to him, to give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking and their Foolish hearts were darkened. They knew God, but they would not give acknowledgement, surrender, authority, position, and they were not thankful. They had a heart that was not filled with gratitude towards him. 2 Timothy writes these words, chapter 3, verse 2. Not in your notes, but I want to read it to you. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Listen, the enemy understands this, that I believe, church, that we have no idea the importance of gratitude, especially to him. 
You see, every day he commands his breath into you. Every day he gives you life. He provides for you. He takes care of you. He is with you no matter what's going on. Israel gave into the lies of the enemy that God was unaware or concerned about their circumstances when they were in the wilderness. And what did they do? They began to grumble. Grumbling, complaining, the expression of discontentment was all part of their, their lives. Grumbling shows a lack of trust or understanding of who God is, his presence, his power, his care, his goodness, his provision, his love for them. Israel believed that what they saw with their eyes, what they were experienced, their present condition was the reality of their destined future. So you know what happened? They came into agreement with the liar rather than who God was. They believed the lies of the enemy and their circumstances rather than the goodness of God, the deliverance of God, the power of God, the life of God, the presence of God. I mean, come on. Who had a more visible presence of God than them? They had a cloud by day and fire by night. You would think that these people would never, ever grumble or complain. They saw the Red Sea part. They walked over on dry ground. They watched Pharaoh's armies get drowned. They saw God miraculously water come out of a rock. Moses strikes the rock. Do you know how much water would have to come out to take care of the animals as well as the people. And then manna rained on them. They didn't even have to get out of their tents. They just unzip it and reach out and grab what they need for the day. You would think that these people would believe God no matter what. But look what God's given us. Look what he's done for us. Look at what he has worked in us. Oh, man, instead of agreeing with God's promises that God said, I'm going to bring you this way, but I'm going to bring you to a land of milk and honey, abundance and prosperity. These people agreed with the circumstances and the lies of the enemy. And God said, none of you will enter. Those who are surviving, they speak with the language of complaining and grumbling. If you want to know if someone's grateful or if they're ingrateful or ungrateful, listen to their words. Listen to how they speak. Listen to how they talk. Listen to what comes out. When you look back at Israel in the wilderness, they grumbled about what to drink. They grumbled about what to eat. They grumbled about the giants in the land. They grumbled about God's faithfulness, about his leadership. They developed the habit of grumbling. Do you know? We're not born as grumblers. We're not born as complainers. We develop the habit of complaining. We develop the view of complaining. We develop the spirit of complaining. You see, Thomas, when Jesus had shown himself to the other disciples, they're all locked in a room, and Jesus once again transports into that room. Says, Thomas, why don't you come over here for a minute, bro? Put your, put your fingers. You know, he was the one that said, unless I can touch and put my hands there and into the wounds, Jesus shows up and he instantly realizes what an idiot I was. Because you see, as a Christ follower, we don't, See, then believe. We believe, then we see. Our life is one of faith. 
Our life is one of trust and confidence in God that when everything around us says it's impossible, it can't be changed, nothing can happen, you're going to go down, you're not going to survive, God shows up and goes, oh really, I'm the God that does the impossible. I'm the God that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or imagine. I'm the God that can heal a marriage. I can heal a body. I can bring a prodigal home. I can change your financial place where you're at, but you've got to live by faith and you've got to speak in faith. You've got to declare in faith. Oh, there's nothing more destructive than a spirit of self-pity and whining and complaining. Saint Benedict said these words. He lived in the late AD 400s, early 500s, considered one of the major church fathers. He wrote these words, that if a disciple grumbles, not only out loud, but in his heart, his actions will not be accepted with favor by God, who sees that he is grumbling in his heart. First and foremost, there must not be no word or sign of grumbling, no manifestation of it, for any reason. How many of you are with me so far? I'm going to wrap this up in just a few moments. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. I digress. They stole that from the Bible. So, yeah, just like don't worry, be happy. They stole that from the Bible. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled request. Not your complaining, whining, oh, dear God, please, oh, uh, no, no. Make your faith-filled request before God. What's it say? With overflowing gratitude. When you come to him, come in faith and with gratitude, overwhelming gratitude that God, you are good and that you hear my cry and you know who I am and your eyes are upon me and I can trust you. When you begin to live a life of overflowing gratitude, no matter what you're facing, it becomes a weapon to the liar and to the onslaught of the enemy. You know why? Because all of a sudden you move from being a baby where everything's about, well, I just don't feel. I just don't feel God. I just don't feel like, oh, I don't feel like he loves me today. I don't feel like, oh, God, I just don't feel it today. To where you become like Paul. He said, I know in whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is faithful. He is able to do. You move into a place. Oh, What do I mean? There are three decisions you need to make right now. Before I tell you those, I got to tell you this. What are you going to focus on? You see, all of us every day, we have to decide what we're going to give our attention and our focus to. You know why? Because what you focus on, you will feel. And what you feel will become real. Thoughts create feelings. Oh, you don't think so? Just start thinking some negative thoughts. Think about how, you know, they're not treating me good, and they don't like me, and they just, you know, well, just, just watch what happens to you when you start thinking all these negative thoughts. You know what happens? Is that your thoughts begin to influence your body, your nervous system, What's going on? All of a sudden, your heart starts pounding more. You start having panic attacks about things. You know why? Because what you think you feel and what you feel, if you stay in that for a long time, if you just keep doing and doing and you keep thinking these thoughts, you keep feeling these feelings, pretty soon it becomes your destiny. You know why? Because you're aligning yourself to a lie and not the truth. 
You're aligning yourself. You say, well, Pastor Eddie, what if it's true that they don't like me? So what if they don't like you? Pray for them. In fact, the Bible says, pray for your enemies. Bless them. It doesn't say curse them, get in their face, tell them that they're off, they're wrong. No, no, it says bless them. If they have a need, meet the need. Bless them. I'm going to tell you something. That'll change your life. And it will change theirs. There's nothing worse than when somebody's mad and they're trying to get at you and you're just living the, the joyful life. I'm just living the joyful life. What you focus on, you feel, becomes your reality. You develop the pattern of that. What are you going to focus on? These are the three things you need to decide today before you head out for the week. First of all, what are you going to focus on, what I have or what I'm missing? What are you going to focus on, what you have or what you're missing? It's hard to move from surviving to thriving when you're focused on what you don't have rather than what you do have. Gratitude is something that you develop because you stop comparing you stop looking out and go well they have that and they have that and they have that God what's wrong I don't get that you don't love me as much no 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 you need to say God I am so grateful today that I have what I have today my family my faith my finances my home but I have food to eat thank you God when you're going through difficulty, it matters what you choose to focus on. You've got to look beyond the problem. You can sit there and stare at it and say, it's impossible. Or you can stare beyond it and say, I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. And I am focusing on the fact that God, you will bring me through. That God, you will provide. That God, you will do a work. And I'm praising you before I ever see it happen. <laughs> Victory and joy are lost when you focus on what you don't have rather than what you do have. I can take you around the world to people over one billion live and earn less than two dollars a day. Over one billion live in extreme poverty. No mattresses to sleep on. No oven to cook on. We have been so blessed. Three billion earn and live on two to eight dollars a day. Three billion. Four billion people daily live and earn less than eight dollars a day. Oh, my friends. The enemy wants you to get caught up in the wrong things and lose your gratitude. You need to get up every day. And if all you have is to say, God, I have breath today, then you declare it with every ounce of your strength and say, God, thank you for another day to declare that you're good, that to declare that you love me, to declare that you, God, are going to take care and provide, God, that you're a good God and you're on the throne. We need to become people that declare Declare that no matter what, God is good. Secondly, what I can control or can't control. You got to focus on what you can control or can't control. Depression, anxiety, fear, high blood pressure, lack of sleep, anger, disorders, they grow when you mix these up. What can't I control? I can't control people. Some of you have been trying in marriage, it's not working. You're trying to control your spouse. I gave that up a long time ago, and she did too. You can't control the market. You can't control the weather. You've got to focus on what you can control. What can you control? My attitude towards a situation. I can control my words. You don't have to say everything that's in your mind. You don't have to declare everything that you're thinking. In fact, a lot of times people don't really care what you're thinking, so you just keep it to yourself. <laughs> I can control my diet. Oh. 
I admit I haven't done too well at that one with Thanksgiving and all that coming in. I can control my calendar. I can control what I focus on. I can control my thoughts. I can take my thoughts captive and shift them to what I want. Frustration happens when we get these mixed up. You got to focus on what you have, what, not what you don't have, what you can control, not what you can't control. And you've got to focus on, you got to decide if you're going to focus on the past, the present, or the future. Oh man, too many people are still living in the past. They're still living with shame, with guilt, with, with frustration, with regret. I wish, I wish. All the wishing in the world is not going to change the past. It's gone. It's under the blood of Jesus. It has been taken care of. You've got to let it go. You can focus all your time on the future. But how many know a lot of things that we think about in the future doesn't come to pass? What God has given us is today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that God has given us. And when you get up, you got to say, God, today I got another day to live to do something for you. The present is where you move from surviving to thriving because all you have is today. So what are you going to do with today? Are you going you gonna, to you gonna use today to be bitter? Are you going to use today to be angry? Are you going to use today to say, I'm going to complain about what's going on and how I'm not? Are you going to use today to say it's not fair? Or are you going to use today and say, God is great and he is good and I'm gonna find a way to do something for someone. I'm gonna find a way to share that, to live that, to walk that. I'm gonna de declare. And if the only ones that hear me is the enemy, I don't care. I'm gonna declare with a loud voice that I love him and that he's my God and I can serve him. If you're laying in a bed, and you're going, oh, no, you know what, Pastor Eddie, I've got, I've got such pain in that. I understand. But I encourage you in the midst of your pain that every day use today to be grateful and to be thankful and to say, God, today, you know what? This could be my day that I'm going to be healed. Today, because you're a healer. Today could be my day. And I am going to trust you. Oh, man. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything. It doesn't say for everything. It says in everything. God takes those things in life that are not pleasant, and he uses those for our good. He teaches us. He doesn't waste things. He shows us that he's faithful for this is the will of God you're declaring your trust your confidence and goodness Psalm 9 verse 1 I'll give thanks to the Lord with all my heart I will tell of all of your wonders first Corinthians 15 57 but thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ second Corinthians 2 14 but thanks be to God who always always look at your neighbor and say always 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 leads us in triumph doesn't say sometimes or he might or maybe no he always if you want to move from surviving to thriving in 2025 you've got to make gratitude and thankfulness a weapon in your toolbox you got to pull it out every day and say, ha, you're coming at me with all your lies, but I'm coming at you with all the truth. And I'm going to declare the goodness of God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And his love endures forever and ever and ever and ever. His mercies are new every single day. 
Do you realize you woke up and God said, I got brand new mercy for you today. I got brand new loving kindness for you today. I got, I got brand new grace for you today. You see, God taught us a principle in the wilderness with manna. God gives you each day what you need for the day. Don't be borrowing from the past or the future. Today is the day. So you know this. God will give you the grace you need, the strength you need, the power you need, the goodness you need, the, the favor you need. God has everything you need for that day. And when you lay your head down at night, you say, God, thank you for all your provision for today. I thank you that tomorrow that you are my provider and that, God, I trust in you. And when you get up, you say, God, thank you. Today you have new for me and I am going to use it for the glory of God and to rub it in the face of the enemy. I'm going to say, devil, you're not taking my joy. You're not taking my peace. You're not taking my kids. You're not taking my strength. You're not taking my health. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good. What are you going to focus on? I say today is the day that we say, God, enough already. I've been listening to that enemy too long and focusing on that. I'm readjusting my sights right now. I'm adjusting them to where they need to be. I've been focusing on all this other stuff. Today I declare in the name of Jesus, that right there belongs to him, not me. It belongs to him. And God... I'm fixing my eyes on you. You're good. And you're going to have times where that's going to be tested. You're going to have times you're going to fail it. The good news is this. God is a restorer. He doesn't hold grudges. And he's your biggest cheerleader. He's like, ah, you know what? It's okay. Get up. A righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up. He doesn't lay there. He gets up. Would you stand with me, please? How many want to move into thriving? How many want 2025 to be the year of thriving in your marriage, in your family, in your finances, in your health, in your life? God delights in blessing his people. God delights in being good because that's who he is. He didn't have to try to be good. He is good. He is love. He is grace. He is righteousness. He is power. He is. Hey, thank you for watching Century Assembly on YouTube. And to stay updated, please don't forget to subscribe so you can get all the announcements, the updates, the live streams, and all the good stuff that we have to offer you. Please like, comment, and share.